She hasn't been outside the US before now, but she joins us. You've just basically arrived for the first time outside America. Love it. It's fantastic. Thank you for having me. Not at all. So you, you've, you've, you've traveled here for what reason? Just tell us. Um, well, I've always wanted to see London, but really I wanted to um, make the trip and um, sort of speak the wishes and, and thoughts and sentiments of my father and hopefully, you know, get a message to my sister um, that, well, things aren't really what they've seen. There's so much misperception and hopefully we could clear up record and and move forward with peaceful resolve. I Understood. And your father is, is Thomas. And, and just tell us why you think Meghan hasn't been in touch with him since the wedding. Honestly, I think, well, you know, but if you can imagine this, this media um, madness has been quite um, overwhelming and, and media is quite powerful. And so um, when you when you take something as powerful as that, that, that goes around the world, that lightning speed, larger than life, whether you say nothing or you say something, it's almost always twisted we've experienced um, for negative effect to self-publication. I think it's been quite hurtful to our family. Um, I, I can't imagine how hurtful it's been to my sister. Um, but so much uh, of reality has been twisted, is unknown, and, and it's unfortunate. So. I suppose the thing that went wrong for Thomas Markle, your father, was when he posed for those photos and people thought they were real, um, but they were just posed and he took money. That's the photo of him having his wedding suit fitted and him reading about castles and all that. But was that a mistake? Actually, he wasn't being fitted for a wedding suit. He was being, because he wears rather large hoodies, he was having someone, and those were not fake. He was having someone fit him for sweat jackets because he's, you know, he orders um, larger um, jackets. Well, him size. reading about castles, that was a, that bit, and, took money for that, right? But not very much. And and the logic behind that really is that, you know, I, ha I became so tired of him um, being purposely photographed in such a hurtful way, in a disparaging way. I said, you know, you have a right like a business card to defend yourself and have the world and the British royal family see you as you accurately are. Don't lay down and let them disparage you like that. But, but and so with regards to the money and this idea of cashing in, he was turning down $50,000 interviews. So clearly... Money was not the goal, and the small amount of money that he received, 1,500 pounds, the photographers made the money, not my father. Do, and do you regret? It was never, it I was know never you, a goal. I know you've said that it was your idea that he posed for these, these photos that got him into so much trouble. Do you regret that? I would regret more allowing paparazzi to continually make him look like a horrible slob and, and do everything they could to disparage him. It felt really wrong to allow that to continue. And because I love him, I said, you cannot let yourself be seen like this and as and a, a representation of who you are. Right. That was wrong. Did he have a heart attack before the wedding? He had two actually, one earlier. And I think because of the pressure of the wedding, he really wanted to be there. He had a speech planned. Um, he was really looking forward to it. And the doctors finally said, you can't ignore this. I mean, he was literally working his speech up to the last minute. So obviously said, he, he couldn't said, be there on the day. It just seemed, looking at it, that he someone had given him this silly idea of posing for photos and taking money. He, he went with your advice on that. He then got into all kinds of trouble. He got into a terribly stressful situation and then ends up having a heart attack. Well, he had had one earlier and really, I think like so many men, was avoiding some of the signs, you know, the, the stress, the shortness of breath, um, pins and needles. He really wasn't up to par, but because he wanted to be at the wedding, he ignored the signs. Even though the doctor said you'd had a small one earlier, I think he was in denial. He wanted to be tough and brave it, be able to walk my sister down the aisle. So unfortunately, he let it go too. Okay. Yeah, he missed that. You don't blame yourself for mishandling that I don't I don't see what the other option would be because no matter what I, I found that certain publications will make you look as bad as they can and I think it, it really reflected poorly on everyone it, I couldn't let that continue now Megan is as we know is your younger sister Samantha stepsister you, you feel she's frozen you out is that right well she's not my stepsister she's my blood Half sister. Okay, half sister. I think it's yeah. really funny the Kardashians don't call each other half anything, even though they have. Well, let's, let's sons, say sister. That's fine. You've got the same father. Yeah. yeah. You feel she's frozen you out. I think that 
perhaps she was hurt. I mean, I, I felt like she should know better than to believe tabloids. But I, I think, quite frankly, she probably believed what she was seeing as well. And, and I guess there's also protocol that you say nothing. So I think that snowballed, unfortunately, to a lot of hurt feelings on everyone's part. And I'm hoping that we can have a happy ending. To Could it be story. because you called her Dutch ass? That was, you know, and I do, I do regret that. Do I, am I pronouncing that right? Dutch ass? Or you know, is it yes, my... Um, Dutch ass, maybe. Well, I worked in broadcasting and radio and for a while, and I've always been a bit boisterous. But I think I said that at a point which it, it seemed inescapable, there was no return. It seemed as though... So you shouldn't um, have said it? Yes, but the I, it was more last... Do you apologize for it? To my sister, absolutely. You apologized to your sister? Yes, and we and, in... and and to Harry as well. But you, well you didn't at the family. time, did you? Um, no, I was really lashing out at media because I felt that no matter what we said, you know, everything I said in the beginning was favorable. Nobody printed that. And when I said nothing, they created stories. And it was really just, it had run amok. And I felt let's, like... All right, let's because it may be the stories are fueled by you, Samantha. You said fake waves and smiles can stop. The Dutch ass can bow to the daddy. On Harry's birthday, you tweeted a picture of a hamster as you mac down on your birthday cake. Here it is. As you mac down on your birthday cake, think about the birthday wishes you never extended to your father-in-law. It's quite aggressive, isn't it? It was meant to be funny, and I thought the picture was cute. That was, someone said, oh, you know, you're suggesting that Harry looks like a hamster. Well, he's quite handsome. I would never say he looks like a hamster. Yeah, meant, meant to be funny, was, but, but hurtful. You, you specialize in helping people with mental health problems. So you know that what some one person means to be funny is very hurtful, destructive to another, don't it, you? It, it was meant to be light, but at that point I'd felt like, you know, the bottom line is you should reach out to dad. There's no excuse for continuing and, and ignoring. And I felt like, you know, the British people, anyone who has brothers or sisters would understand, you, you might not always agree with what is going on, but and so you, so you don't generally disagree. Or I'm, agree I'm, with I'm struggling here because I can't see how, if you've got a disagreement with somebody, you take it out on her on Twitter. You described her as Princess Pushy, but you haven't spoken to her for 10 years. No, no, and that's not true either. It was three years ago, contrary to public You assumption. dubbed her narcissistic and selfish. And did anyone see me say those words? Who, who, who dubbed her? Narcissistic these are selfish. your these are your tweets. No, that was not a tweet. Well, the the princess pushy. The Duchess of nonsense. The Duchess of nonsense. I did say, but only at a point to which the media madness had gone so far. Your, so your, in, your book was going to be called what? The Diary of Princess, princess Pushy. Push. Right. Okay. So you used the phrase. And there was deny a, it. There was a princess pushy in history. The title of my book was meant to make a mockery of social labels because she had been coined the Princess Pushy. Those were not my words. And so when I wrote this book, I thought it would be clever, unfortunately it backfired, to show in my book that the content is opposite the title. Well, look, I, I, what, what I'm driving you know, at here, you, you have insulted Meghan so much, your sister, including blaming her for her father's death while he's still alive. She would be well advised to pull up the drawbridge on the royal castles, wouldn't she, Samantha, and but, not see you? But I wonder how you would feel. Is it more insulting that people respond to feeling disregard and feeling ignored, or is it best that everyone just continue saying nothing? So I thought, at, you know, in the beginning, when we spoke publicly, I thought that we were being open-hearted and um, even favorable, and that fell on deaf ears, and the media turned it into something that it was not. So when the media we, when aren't we... to blame because you're, you're, it's it's consistently rude, isn't it? Your public messaging, calling her Cruella de Vil. We've been through it all. I just why do it all publicly? That's why I don't understand. I've got a brother. I, I mean, we're we're great friends. If I fall out with him, there are lots of ways I can I can send him a letter. He may not open it. I can call. Him. What I'm not going to do is tweet insults at him because then he won't talk to me. Isn't that how we all work with each other? What was going on that didn't make sense is that I really started to feel protective over our father. Because but why insult her? I don't understand. Because he was being purposely ignored. Sure, but, but, but how does it help him to alienate Megan? I don't understand. Help me understand. We were hoping that private channels would be used. They're not when being they, used. When they failed, 
we went public. So, yeah, well, but I, help me understand. How does it get Megan closer to your father to insult her? How does that work? The goal at that point wasn't just getting closer because it was also about bringing out a very important point that you don't isolate family. You are a humanitarian. And I believed all of those things about her. But you want to shame her. That's what it is. No, ignoring family, though, is not the way but to But you handle. want to shame her, don't you? I wanted to point out that it wasn't a function of family ignoring or disrespecting her, that there was a lot going on. Perhaps it was British royal protocol, that you say nothing, but the public were making a mockery out of the family, and I felt like it had to stop. All right. So I, you know, perhaps I was frustrated. I was lashing out more at the media. Does your, but just than, on your dad, I don't know what your dad thinks, and I haven't seen very much from him. He might be mortified by seeing this fight between you and Meghan, or rather one-sided fight. Yeah. Has he actually rung you up at all and said, can you cut I, it out? I speak to him three times a day. And sure. He, he says, go uh, ahead and insult her. Um, we don't look at it as an insult. You know, I... Cruella I, I de Vil, Duchess of... A, what is it? Duchess of nonsense? I'm a bit of a quick wit, but I will say that, you know, I think most people within your families, you, you get to the point where you, you speak... Um, fondly and politely, but then you get to the point where you say, hey, what's up with this? This was not right. And you get Not on Twitter, Samantha. Yeah. Not on, if you fall out with your family, you don't do it on Twitter. I don't know why you've done it this way. Now, how are you going to see Megan in London, given that she doesn't want to see you? Um, well, I was hoping that maybe we would have the chance to speak, that she would know I was here. Um, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. Well, it might. She might well be watching. Did, you went down to Buckingham Palace yesterday. Okay. Did you, could you signal or you were just outside? Mm -hmm. did, did you have any way of telling her you were outside? No, but I... Mm -mm. What would your message be for her now if she's watching? It says clear out all the stuff that's happened before and just assume you're her sister, half-sister, whatever. She's watching now, let's say, and you can say something to her. I would just say that there is so much water under the bridge and so much has spun out of control that was never intended to. And, um, you know, I think everybody was hurt uh, not being included or invited to the wedding. Um, but I felt, I felt as though it could have all been nipped in the bud had everyone been included and, and we all just agreed to move forward with positive resolve and, and the, the hurt feelings wouldn't have snowballed, but believe it or not, you know, it doesn't mean that we love you any less. I just think that families can be this way when there's confusion and when people are hurt. So moving forward, um, I apologize and um, I wish things could be different. Mm. Would, if she agreed to meet you, would, could she trust that you'd keep it private? So you wouldn't go and do a big interview with CNN afterwards and say, she said this and I said that, or no. So you'd be, go back into that family thing. And would you, would you then try and get your dad over here or would you think that Megan should go over and see him over there? I'd love for him to come here. Um, you know, and I, I was feeling at the wedding though too, I was hoping they would whisk him, you know, on, uh, over on a private plane, but I think perhaps they were also concerned with his health. Um, I just, yeah, if things had gone differently, I think um, it would have been better for his health and certainly better for her as well. You believe that they hurt him, that the royal family hurt him in some way? I don't think it was intentionally. I just think they didn't really understand what was going on. And so it had a horrible reciprocal effect. Um, and, and there was no way to communicate. There was this huge media wall and protocol. So the hurt feelings continued. And we and should, we, we, without referring to hamsters, have you got any message for Harry? Um, he, he is, you know, such a gentleman and, and so savvy. And I, I would say that, you know, she has found her prince. And um, as my little sister, you know, and being older, I would think, you know, when I, when I get older and when I pass away, you wonder, you know, will your kids and your younger siblings be left in good hands? Well, I'm only thankful that she's in very good hands. So couldn't ask for more. If we look at a little bit of just Megan's past and how well she's done, she's shot to fame through her acting. And I guess, I don't know, we've got some pictures of, of suits here, but mm -hmm. that was her, the thing that made her pretty famous in, in the UK. 
Um, so, so now I just wonder for you, Samantha, and here I'm sort of asking you to be really honest with us. When you watched her in this, were you consumed with jealousy? Um, jealousy is, is a strange, I hear that and it doesn't really make sense. I'm so much older than she is. Um, I had my opportunities, I made my choices, and you love your siblings, you know, you want them to do well, so... Um, and then no, we, saw, we, we saw, obviously, her life then gets even bigger, and she's mm -hmm. with Harry at the Invictus Games, and mm -hmm. I'm just guessing that for you, watching this from a distance, however you're feeling, it probably is probably quite a difficult thing. Your sister's being shared, she's mm -hmm. elsewhere, she's not speaking to you. Did you find that very difficult? Um, no, I, w I was more hurt for my father. I think I was a bit brokenhearted at the way things turned out. But we were a television family, so when when people say, you know, it seems larger than life, and um, no, because at the end of the day, people are people, and that's the way I've always seen it. So as long as, you know, she's happy, then that's what we wanted. And all of the other, you know, the bells and the whistles and, you know, the, the royal status, with all due respect, um, is wonderful, but you want people to be happy simply, and that's what we looked at. Are you worried about your dad's health now? Yeah. Is, because do, how the, long, do you, are you talking that maybe he, he might not be with us for that much longer? Is that the worry here? Well, he's 74, and so, you know, there was a lot of um, public mucking about suggesting that, you know, he'd he'd faked a heart attack, and what was he doing eating KFC if he'd had a heart attack? Well. That was for someone else, and I don't think many people know that if you have a heart attack, it's not an invasive procedure. They go up your leg, they plant stints in the heart, but the damage that was done to the heart will always be there. He's, his breathing is challenged, and um, all things considered, I think you know our days are always numbered, but is perhaps more so. Mm. Have, have the palace asked you to stop talking? Nobody ever asked me to stop talking. Prin and, um, Prince Harry got on the phone to Thomas before the wedding, did he, or? He simply, um, it's my understanding that what was said was more of, you know, an overview of the media will eat you alive, but we didn't have the experience or um, the coaching to know what that um, entailed. And so I had worked in broadcasting. I thought, oh, I can handle anything. Oh, it's, you know, the, the, but I had no idea. Right. That when you when you don't say something, they create stories. When you do say something, they twist it. It's quite negative. And I would say 98% of what was said was were not my words or my father's. Right. Unbelievably. Let's